On this page, what I'd like to do is discuss with you use of the built-in calculator functions. And we'll do that by doing an example, a slightly different example than an earlier one. We've got a loan of $100,000 at 9% compounded monthly. And we're told that it would require monthly payments of $839.20 if amortized over 25 years. We're asked to determine the amortization period if the payments are increased to $1,100 per month. First of all, what we'd like to do is to confirm that the monthly payment does have an amortization uh, with an amortization of 25 years is in fact the correct monthly payment. So what we'll do is we'll say, we know that the loan is $100,000 and that represents the present value. So on your calculator, or you turn it on and you'll see that the uh, annuity uh, functions are in the one of the rows of the calculator for N, I, Y, P, V, P, M, T, and F, V. So what we'll do is we'll determine which of the values we need to input. $100,000 represents the present value, so we will input that. So $100,000 input with the PV value. And you should see on your calculator display, PV is equal to $100,000. The amortization period is 25 years and monthly payments. So 25 times 12 is 300. So we're gonna enter in 300 on the keyboard and uh, press the N key for a number of payments. And you should see N is equal to $300. The uh, interest rate is 9% compounded monthly, so we're going to press 9, just enter in, point, uh, enter in 9. We don't need to enter in decimal 0.09 because your calculator assumes the interest rate is uh, percent form. So we'll enter in 9 and IY key. And so the I slash Y is equal to 9. That tells you that the nominal rate is 9%, but it doesn't tell you how the interest is compounded. So what we need to do is we need to enter in second function IY, Press the second function IY. Payments per year should be set to 12. And if it's not, if it's any other number, you should key in 12 and then press the enter key. So P PY, payments per year is 12. Now press the down arrow button, the cursor down button, and you should see CY is also equal to 12. And if it's not, make sure that you set it to 12. 12 is the CY value or compounding periods per year the compounding or the interest periods per year should be set to 12. Now we're going to get out of this function by hitting second quit. So second quit to get back to the main screen. And I think we've entered in all the values that we need to enter. We've entered in the PV value, the IY value, the CY value, compounding periods per year, and the number of payments. And now what we'd like to do is to compute the payment. So CPT, compute the payment, and we'll end up with a payment size equal to negative 839.196. And that rounds off to 839.20. Now you'll notice that the payments are negative. And the reason why they're negative is because they represent the outflow of money. So we've received an inflow or a positive flow of $100,000. That's the size of our loan. And the payment is applied to that loan. It's a cash out or a cash payment against that loan. So that's why it's negative, because every time we make a payment, the loan will be reduced. So we've got negative payments, positive loan. Otherwise, alternately, what you could do is you could, if you wanted to, you could enter in the present value as a negative quantity, and that would make the payments a positive quantity. The payments are always going to be the opposite sign of the either the present value or the future value. Now, in the next part of the question, we're asked what happens to the number of payments if you increase the monthly payment to $1,100 per month instead of $839 per month. Um, and, and so in this particular case, what's going to happen is we're going to change the payment size to $1,100 and see what happens to the number of periods or the number of payments. Now, uh, what that means is that everything else stays the same. The interest rate stays the same. The loan stays the same. It's still $100,000 is the present value. But now it's not negative 839 as my payment. My payment is now going to be equal to uh, negative 1100 because I'm going to be making $1,100 payments against it. So what I'd like you to do now now is to key in an 1100 and change the sign to negative and then input that into the payment uh, function on your calculator. So your PMT value is now negative 1100. And remember that uh, uh, the present value of $100,000 is still retained unless you've changed it, of course, but 
assuming that you have not changed it. And now what I'd like you to do is to press the compute number of payments or compute n, CPTN. Computing the number of payments turns up a value of 153.256. And n, of course, will always be positive. The number of payments is always positive. So what does this tell you? This tells you that we need 153 full monthly payments of $1,100, 153 full payments, and 154th smaller payment. And the question might be, what is the size of the last payment, the 154th payment? You will notice on your calculator that you have an amort function, amortization function. And you can press that by entering in second function amort. The amort key is right above the PV function, or present value key. So let's press second function amort. And what appears on your screen display is P1 equals to 1. It may be something different, but uh, the default is that P1 is equal to 1. And if it's not, set P1 equal to 1 by pressing in 1 and enter. Now I'd like you to press the down arrow button or the cursor down button. And the next displayed value is P2 is equal to and whatever that may be. What I would like you to do is to press P2 is equal to 153. So I'd like you to go from the, 100, the first payment to the 153rd payment. Now, once you've entered in 153, press the enter key so that it's registered. So you, now you have a displayed value that says P2 is equal to 153. Now, if you press the down arrow button, you will see that the calculator takes a little while to think about this, but it says it tells you that the balance outstanding is $280.45. So we'll press the down arrow key one more time, and you'll see that the PRN value, principal PRN, it paid between the first and the 153rd payment is $99,719. Press the down arrow button one more time. Accumulated interest between the first and the 153rd payment is $68,580. Press the down arrow button one more time and you're back to the beginning of the cycle. P1 is equal to 1. Press the down arrow. P2 is equal to 153. Press the down arrow button one more time, and we end up with the balance line, which is the balance at 153rd month will be equal to $280.45. Well, actually, it's 46 cents if you round that off to the nearest penny. So that's the balance that's outstanding after 153 um monthly payments have been made. So what I would like you to do is to store that number in memory one. Because in order to figure out the size of the last payment, the size of the final payment, what you will need to do is to add interest to that for one more month. And so that's why I wanted you to store that in memory one. So now we know that after 153 months, we now have a balance of $280.46, and we want to know the size of the 154th payment. So we're going to take that balance and multiply that by 1 plus the rate for one more month. So in other words, the final payment or a payment number 154 will be equal to $280.46 multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate, and the rate per month is 0 0.0075. So 0 0.075, and that will work out to an amount of $282.56. So the final payment, the last payment, is $282.56.